can't be my man Zebra. They say Chuck a go getter, yeah, I'm a overachiever. In college, I play football, I was a wild receiver. Ain't got shit to do with this, but I just thought that I should miss it. Hey, don't, don't be playing me 50, don't be moving iffy. I, I keep all this. You see it, you see it, you see what it say, you see what it say. You already know what it is. Gotta push the name. Alright man, somebody asked a question and I felt like I should do a video on it and add my own input on the question as well. The question was, should you stay or leave a shop? Should you stay or leave the shop you? And I'm gonna talk about it. When you in a shop, it's not the shop owner's job to get you clients. It's not the shop owner's job to get people in your chair. If you're an entrepreneur and you're working for yourself, you're your own boss, it's up to you to get your own client. You cannot fault the shop owner because you're not getting clients. That's up to you. It's up to you to get your own clients. It's up to you to get your own clients. Tell. It's up to you to get basically like it's like growing a fan base. It's not the shop owner's job. The shop owner already lets you use the chair and things like that. So you already have your foundation, your base to do what you have to do. But as far as you getting clients and you working, it's not his or her job to get you clientele. Barber client relationship is top tier. Like it's very important. Barber clientele relationship is very important. When you are an entrepreneur and you are when you're at these shops and you're doing booth rent or whatever the case may be, environment matters. Certain clients come to you because of your personality and what you bring to the table. They may gravitate towards the type of person you are. It may gravitate towards the positivity that you bring. It may gravitate towards the knowledge that you bring. And if the environment around you isn't suitable for their mindset and what they believe in, you may lose a client. You may lose customers just because of the surrounding environment. A lot of people don't want to talk about sport and political things and, you know, females and triple poles and things like that. A lot of people don't want to talk about that. A lot of people do want to talk about elevating, getting money and LLCs and building a brand. A lot of people do have that mindset. And if that's the type of person you are, but the shop is not like that, that's a battle that you're going to have to face. When you have these clients in your chair, go the extra mile. Perform excellent service every time. The same way that you got that client is the same way that you can keep that client. The same great service, the same punctuality, the same consistency, that work ethic, the same thing that you give that client, you wanna give that client every time. Do not slack off on your client. Don't skip out on certain service. Don't start off with a hot towel and then a couple months in or a couple weeks in when you actually have that client, you stop that hot towel service. Don't stop that crispy lineup when you started with the crispy line don't do a nice beer line and down the line get lazy and say you know what i might i might skip the sharp beard or i, I might skip the towel or i might skip you have to be the same way 100 percent of the time you have to be the same way consistency because if you were in that chair and you went to a barber and a barber skipped out on certain services either you're gonna a find another barber or b it's gonna become a problem you're gonna bring it up and then there's gonna be a confrontation and an issue there always be consistent whatever services you start with always do it every time never slack on your service that's how you level up be personal with your clients remember names maybe birthday maybe a special event maybe they told you something personal about them that nobody else knows when you're cutting these clientele you're cutting these customers you know this is that time that they may want to get personal with you they may want to be in a vulnerable state they may want to tell you something or they may want to vent and they may not have anywhere else to vent with you not being that open ear you know it, it may be hard for them to explain express you know their gratitude or they may not feel comfortable knowing that they don't have a voice a client never wants to feel invisible in the shop if there's a conversation about football and, or there's a there's an nba championship or whatever the case may be a, a huge special game going on and a client comes in and he's just feeling down and out if he doesn't have that chance to be heard if he doesn't have that chance to have that conversation with you you'll never know what he's going through and a lot of people fail to realize a barber isn't just a barber we're, we're a therapist financial level and many other things. You never want to miss out an opportunity to help somebody. You never want to miss out on the experience of having a conversation with somebody. Because those conversations may put you in certain rooms with certain people. Or those conversations may get you to a place where you want to be. You may talk to somebody and you may want to start a business. But you'll never know how to start that business if you didn't talk to that person. So always keep in mind when you have a client, they may want to be heard. You just have to take time out the day to listen. Now there are some clients that don't want to talk. There are some clients that just want to cut. A lot of barbers are young. Alright, get into these shops and we around all these OG barbers, all these older barbers, and we come in with the ring light, we come in with the camera, we have a certain way
way of doing things and all the OGs, not all, but a lot of the OGs, a lot of the older barbers may not, you know, be familiar with the times. They may hate on you because you got the camera. They may hate on you because you have a YouTube channel. They may hate on you because they don't understand. And being in that negative environment in a shop where you have people that's been doing this way longer than you hating on you can really affect your mental. But if you choose to stay in the shop with, the, with that negative mindset from other people, you could really do what you do. Prove yourself. Do your cuts. Do your feeds. Have your camera out. A lot of OGs see these younger barbers and they start hating. A lot of the older barbers, you know, they, they see these youngers come in, like I said, with the, with the camera and the ring light, and they start hating because they're like, yo, you doing too much. And I seen it. I seen it happen. You know, they, they start hating. They start telling the younger barber, hey, you don't need all that. You doing too much. So you need to get off social media. Who are you to tell that man or that woman to get off social media? Do you not know they're using a platform to not only build a portfolio, but get more clients to show their work? Just because you didn't think of the idea, don't mean you gotta hate on the next person. You can't hate on the times. Times have changed. There's a new way of doing things. Business cards may not work no more. Going up to people one by one is cool. It's cool to go up to someone and say, hey, I'm a barber. This is what I do. These are my cuts. But you have Instagram. You have TikTok. You have all these social media sites. And you're telling these younger barbers not to use that to their advantage. You're telling these younger barbers not to use social media, not to record. What if it's somebody who wants to actually see the cut, see how the person cut? They may want more than a picture. That's where the videos come in. And if that barber has a whole lot of videos back to back to back showing services, showing his personality, showing his cuts, showing his progress, that's his portfolio. That's their portfolio. And that's what a lot of OGs have to understand. Like, we're, we're on YouTube. Like I said, it's a new day and age. This, this is not back in the day. We're using social media to brand our business. It's not like it was back in the day where you got a business card and you hope that person calls you back. We have email. You could go on my social media. You can see what type of person I am outside the shop. You can see all the cuts I did. Then you can hit me up. It's so crazy. It's to the, we live in a time where somebody could live in a whole nother state. They can find you on Instagram and book you then and there and then fly to you or when they come in to the state that you're in, book which a lot of OGs wondering how, oh, how you get a client from Australia? How you get a client from New York? How you get a client from DC? How you get a client from Philly? Like you got barbers coming to you from different states. And you got all the old barbers talking about how did you do it? Consistency. Brian, you can't hate on the up and coming barbers because they found a new way to do things. Not only is it better in my opinion, but you're reaching a fan base, a way bigger fan base than you would just going outside around the corner. Your brand affects the type of clientele that you have. Your brand affects the type of people that ain't your chick. Let me explain. Like I said before previously, if, if you're trying to spread positivity and knowledge and things like that, then those are the type of people you're going to attract. If you promote negativity and violence and things like that, those are the type of people you're going to attract. Don't be a negative person and expect success from positivity, vice versa. Don't be a positive person and expect negativity around you all the time. And it, it works both ways. If you're just starting off, 100% shop. If you're just starting out, 100% go to a shop, 100%. You don't have no clientele and you're just starting out. You may be able to learn some things from barbers around you. You know, a lot of people finish barber school and they start getting a little better with cutting a couple months in and then they want to go to a suite. Then when it's time to pay them bills and they don't have no clientele coming in because the shop, you're going to have walk-ins, you're going to have a time to build your clientele. You in that suite, you don't have no sign. All you got is a website or whatever you're promoting your stuff on and the faith of God. My advice to new barbers, my advice. If you're just starting out, I advise you to go to a shop. Even if you have the money to get a suite, I advise you to start in a shop because the shop gives you a chance to get your feet wet, to see what path you want to take. It gives you a chance to get clientele, gives you a chance to pick up different habits from different people. Now on the flip side of the OGs in the shop, it may be an OG doing something a certain way and you may implement that in your own way. OG might be doing something and you may say, hey, that's pretty cool. Let me let me try that. Let me do that. But you would never know how to do it if you didn't go in that shop. I feel like you should be in the shop if you're just starting out because it doesn't make sense. Like I said, like you you go into a suite when you're just starting out, you go into a suite, you're not going to make no money. Then you complaining about, oh, I'm not getting no clients. Then you start hating what you do. All because you chose to get that suite. You know what I'm saying? These are things you got to think about. You can only control so much in your shop, but I wouldn't say leave the shop and go straight to a suite though. Now, I will say once you start building a clientele and once you get booked, like booked out, you fully booked, your clientele is coming back to back to back. Once you get to that point, 
but you've been doing it for a while, then go ahead and move in that suite. Go ahead and move in that suite because at that point, you could raise your prices. You could probably do more services and you have the freedom to be around the people that you want to be around. You have the power to be around people that have the same mindset as you. You know what I mean? Like in the shop, it may have been negative. You might have been dealing with things that you had to deal with. But once you get in that suite, you block the noise and you really, you know, going in. You know, especially if you're an entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur in that shop. You, you trying to you trying to bring your business. You got other barbers around you doing the same thing that you do. Y'all doing the same thing. So you got to stand out apart from everybody else. On top of branding your business. So not only are you branding your business, you got to show your skill to other people. I ain't saying you got to prove that you better than everybody else. You just have to show in your circle, in your lane, you just have to show why wow, you're a great barber. But these are just some of the things, man, that, that, that I thought of. For those of y'all that's in the shop, let me know how the experience is. For those of y'all in the suite, let me know how the experience is. I said, I just had this video on my mind. I had this conversation with somebody, and I just feel like it would be a good topic to talk about for a video. But, man, that's the end of the video. If you like this video, you know what to do. I appreciate the love and support from each and every one of you. We on the road, man. We on the road. It's your boy, Shy Face, and I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Let's go. Bang! I know she's not in her. She's a dime.